Well, what do we have here? Live Oak. That's what we have. This comes to us from our good friend Tuffy Marginez. What am I going to do with it? I know what I want to do with it. I don't know how I can get there from here. That'll be the top of a bowl because it's so natural. It just looks like the top of a bowl, doesn't it? But what about the rest of it? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy. Let's take a look at it. The piece is about, well, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be what it is now. It's, it's big and heavy, I can tell you that. But doesn't that look like the top of a bowl to you? Hollow out that center there. I'm going to cut away this big stump section, branch section, whatever this is down here. Let me see if I can set this up so that you can see what I have in mind. Now the top is fairly flat. Then I have to come up with a bottom that's opposite that flat. So that would be here. This would be the bottom, parallel with the top. So I need to cut this right around there. The problem is it's too big and bulky and awkward on the bandsaw. So I'm going to have to use a chainsaw. So let me go figure that out. I'm going to take it outside, see if I can clamp it to a tabletop that I've got out there and get this cut off. Well, looky there what I did. I'm very happy with that. Now I know that I'm going to be cutting a round bowl top in here. So I know that I'm going to lose some of this around here, but it'll still be a nice, a nice border. Also, I know that this is a healed over branch section that was cut off at some point in time. And you can't always trust those. Sometimes they're punky or hollow or who knows what. So I'm not going to use a woodworm screw. I'm going to use my faceplate ring to fit in here. Problem is it doesn't fit in here. So I'm going to have to chisel away a little bit. I think that'll work. There's what we have ready to be mounted up on the lathe. See what kind of speed we can get. Not much, about 430 RPM. I think this is going to be a pretty nice piece. I'm going to sharpen up my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. When I say 430 RPM, mask and face shield on. big piece of bark just went flying off of here but I'm not making a huge attempt to keep the bark on except up on the top that one's probably going to go pretty quick well that would be a bad thing because that that's part of our rim I'm going to put some CA under here this missing piece here which is laying right there yeah maybe I'll glue that one back in too it doesn't really get to the rim but I might glue it back in there I'll probably end up cutting it away I'll glue this one on, maybe I'll glue this one on, I don't know. I'll be back. Okay, I've glued this piece down. It never came off, but it was loose. And I glued this piece back on. Right now I'm going to work on flattening off the bottom. At least waiting for the glue to dry did give me a chance to go in and get my pot roast in the oven. So that'll be ready in a couple hours. Yummy! Mashed potatoes too. I'm going to come all the way over here and work on making it a little bit rounder. And this is where we'll probably lose the bark again.
that's just asking for the bark to come off going that way. I can get a lot better cut, but it's scary. I hear something, I hear something loose, so probably, yeah, right there. Well, that's okay, too. I'm not trying to save all the bark. I just, I just don't want that top to get messed up. to the bottom we'll lay out for a tenon I need to sharpen up my diamond point tool. I'll do that with a diamond card. I'll be right back. And that's good. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sando Flex. This is 180 grit and that's as fine as I will go. And I'll be sanding all of these bark inclusions, little notches here and there, all the ins and outs of the piece right down in here, and along the top as far as I can reach. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit. I'll have the lay spinning in reverse at 350. I'm going to work up through 400 grit, and I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on. And then I think because this is pretty round, I can actually sand it while it's spinning. I'll get the top part. And that's going to do a real nice job for us. And then the two inch disc. And that looks pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, let's see what we can get out of this piece. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty impressive. This is shellac based sanding sealer. And then I will apply shellac over this. Oh yeah, this is going to be very, very nice. This is going to take a lot of brushing, of course on all these inclusions and the bark along the top and it'll be a time consuming process but it's going to be worth it. You just don't want to rush the finishing. The sanding and the finishing, you just don't want to rush that. It's so important to how a piece feels and how it feels affects how it looks. If it looks great but doesn't feel good, it just doesn't look so great anymore. Now I've got sanding sealer in this can and my brush and I'm just going to brush it every place the rag won't reach. I'll probably just end up brushing the whole thing, actually. There's so many little voids and bark inclusions and gaps and whatnot. Well, like I said, this is going to take a while, so I'm not going to ask you to watch all of this. But I'll get on two coats of this sanding sealer and then probably two coats of shellac for this one. 
and I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. I can't say I'm looking forward to it because I think it's going to be kind of a tough turn, but I'm looking forward to the end result. I'll see you in a little bit. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. I'm a little worried about this area right here. There's a gap all the way around this. Like this is a kind of a cap sitting on here. And there's that gap and it's just... It worries me. I don't want that whole top popping off of there. I don't think there's anything I could do about it. I could put CA all the way around there, but who knows what's what's under here. We're going to be turning at 630 RPM. 5.8 inch bowl guides, mask, and face shield on. Far enough. Now this is end grain here. This is just bark that we've been cutting, but that's end grain. So I'll be going from the inside out once I get in there, which I guess is about now. I expected it to be hard, but not that hard. I don't know what to make of that. It's just crud. Kind of like dirt. I don't think this was a root. Tuffy didn't say it was a root, and he usually would. It's funny how super soft wood can be harder to turn than uh, hard wood. It's because some of it is hard wood and some of it's soft, so it cuts easy and then it cuts really hard. The hard wood cuts easy. The soft wood just bounces. I'm going to go sharpen again. haven't done much, but... Yeah, that's just dirt. It just cuts like mush. Oh man, I gotta take a break.
I'm going to switch to carbide for a little bit, see if that helps any. Uh, my chisel's dull again already. There's just so much dirt and crud in there. We might be getting past it, but I'm going to give the carbide a try. Very interesting. Also, uh, this top is just too thick. It's just, you know, I really like this, but it's just too thick. So I'm gonna go sharpen up my gouge again and, and take this side down some. Geez, I, I just hate to, but don't you think it's just way too bulky? I do. I'll probably just go back and forth between the gouge and the carbide. Yeah, that looks much better. Still still quite bulky, but way better. <laughs> I think this thing's dull now. It wouldn't even cut that center part. And this is probably dull again. I better see where we are, huh? Uh, about three quarters of an inch on the bottom. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, this is hard wood, but we're getting there. We're way ahead of what we were a little while ago, huh? I'm going to go sharpen this up and I'll be back. I'm, tell I'm telling you, boys and girls, this is a tough one. You should see the dirt in the, just, just, there's just so much dirt in here. It's just floating in the air. I'm trying to cut the sides down thinner. I can, I, I like the top, but the sides are thicker than they need to be. I'll try the carbide again. That's better. Sharpening my gouge. Just sure scraping to clean up the cut a little bit, and it worked. 
Well, we're just about there. I think it's going to be some pretty beautiful green in there. Lots of variation. I see, I see blue or gray here, brown and beige and almost black. Oh boy, I'm glad I checked. Quarter inch. Man, I didn't know we were that close. I got so caught up in doing anything, I forgot to do something. Okay, I'm going to try my scraper. Well, it's not half bad. About a quarter bad, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. Time for sanding. I'm going to be using my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll have the lathe spinning forward at 350 RPM and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Well, that's going to be a lot easier than turning it was, I can tell you that. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. I'm looking forward to this. Boy, for a piece that gave me such a hard time turning it, it sanded up easily and really, really nicely, really smooth. It just, it just blows me away all the time when that happens. Now I'm going to have to do some brushing in here. And I'm going to have to be careful along this edge because I've already got the finish on the outside. And this is kind of a cool big bark inclusion crack right here. I don't know if I said, but I did put two coats of shellac on the outside. Two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of shellac and that's what I'll do on the inside. Because it's such an open grain wood, it just soaks it right up. Then I always like to come behind the brush with a rag to wipe, wipe away those brush marks. Okay. Well, that gives you a good idea what it's going to look like. So I'll finish up another coat of this, two coats of shellac. I'll bring it back and we'll take the tenon off. See you in a bit. The finishing is done. I've got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl. And bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference. So I can just drive my live center into that. And that will help center the bowl on the block of wood. Bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true. That's pretty close. Close enough. Turn the speed up to about 550. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence the beginning to remove that tenon. I just want to check for clearance. We have good clearance. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. And that's pretty small. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Like that.
Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Please stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One live oak bowl in the books. Seems like I've turned a lot of oak lately. Uh, no particular reason for that. It's just what looked good at the time. This is uh, prob probably the most interesting of all of them. So much going on here. I just, I just love that area there. So much going on inside. So many colors. We go from uh, nearly white to nearly black. And what I really like about this piece, well, oak in general, is the open grain. So even with this nice finish on here, you can still feel the grain. You, you know you're holding a piece of wood. But yet it, it's smooth and, and silky and nice and it, it just... It's just a nice piece of wood. I'm glad it turned out so well. Uh, it was definitely the most difficult of all of them. This gave me a hard time in the middle there. Oh my gosh. Dirt and... I, I really don't know that it was dirt. It, it, it seemed like dirt. It almost smelled like dirt. But I don't think this is a root. Uh, it, I, don't, I just don't think it could be a root. Maybe. I doubt if Tuffy remembers. He sent this along quite some time ago. I'm sure he stumbled across it on one of his many hikes. Well, I'm glad he did. Thank you, Tuffy, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.